Jesus came and changed me. Amen. I won't go back. Can't go back to the way it used to be. Before God, your presence came and changed me. Again, I think for this year talks about to begin anew. It don't say go back. It don't say start all over again. No, there's a game that says that when you land on a certain spot, it says go back to to start. It's kind of hard to win if you constantly keep having to go back to start, to start all over. I'm glad I serve a God, Peggy, that finds me where I'm at, dusts me off, washes me. Talk to me, David. Gives me a, a clean heart. Not a new heart, but a clean heart. Washes me. David says, wash me with hyssop that I might be able to serve thee. I love a God that 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 that, that says, I, I, I know who you are. I know you're messy. I know you got issues, but I'm able to take those issues and make them blessings. I'm able to take what the world sees as unworthy and make it worthy. I'm able to take the unrighteous and make them righteous. I'm able to take the sinful man, give him a testimony that God still cares. I, I wish I had some folks that felt like me. I, I, I know most of y'all have been saved all y'all life. Ain't never did nothing wrong. Ain't never had no issues. But I thank God that God will use me anyhow. Uh, again, for those of you who are watching online, we ask to make sure that you have your uh, communion, that you're ready, your juice, your crackers, and, and want to make sure that everybody has theirs. Uh, Sister Duxworth, okay, make sure everybody got their communion so that immediately afterwards we're able to commune together. And you will get a little bit more insight uh, through our message for this morning. If you have your Bibles, I'm not going to ask you to stand because uh, it is, I try to normally, if it's the Lord's will, limit the number of verses. But today I need to go through all of them to, to make sure we're on the same page. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. My Bible study students ought to be able to say amen because you already know where we're going. First Corinthians chapter 11, and I want to begin at verse 17 through 34. Once you found it, say amen. Again, first Corinthians chapter 11, verses 17 through 34. And if you have your own personal Bible, and I don't know how your phones work, whether you can put a little star by something, uh, we want to put emphasis on verse 23. Coming from the King James Version, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at verse 17, Paul writes, Now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not, that ye come together not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there is divisions among you, and I partly believe it. For there must be also heresy among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone taketh before others his own supper. And one is hungry and another is drunken. What? Have ye not houses to eat or and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? In this, I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, 
that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup and when he had supped saying, this cup is a new Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that he come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. That 23rd verse again says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. I want to talk to you if the Lord's will for just a, a few moments from the subject of it begins at the table. I said it begins at the table. Last week we shared that they began to worship how Paul and Silas began to sing and pray at midnight while in the Philippian jail. But today, today we are led to the communion table. In verse 23 of our text, Paul tells us that he received the instructions, the method, the implication the practice of the Lord's Supper from the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And this is what he was trying to share with the local church at Corinth to get them to see this as not just another supper, not just another table setting, not an ordinary meal as, as we prepare to commune this morning. What is it that's going through your mind right now? What is it that brings you to the table? Is it the suffering of Christ? Is it what happened before the breaking of the bread? Do you see the 12 asking, is it I? Am I the one who's going to betray you, Lord? Do you hear Peter saying, there's no way in the world you're going to wash my feet or Jesus telling him tonight tonight Peter you're going to deny me three times is it Jesus saying that this is my body and my blood that is given for the remission of all sin or maybe just maybe it's Jesus saying do this in remembrance what thoughts what races through your mind? What is it that pricks your heart this morning? Is it the acts of salvation and the love of God, the father whose son is giving of himself? Or has the table become just another table, just another custom, just another tradition? Just something that we do because it's the first Sunday of the month. Think back. Think back, if you would. And Anaya, this ain't for you because uh, you, you can't think back far enough. But think back, if you would, to the dinner table when you were growing up. Was the TV, Peggy, 
next to the table? Did everyone fix their plate and then carry it to their bedrooms or the couch? Where are their phones at the table? Did everybody come and eat at separate times? In the movie, Jock Back to the Future, since we're doing movies today. In the movie, Back to the Future, Marty goes and he visits his grandparents' house. And at his grandparents' house, they he sees where they have taken the TV and put the TV on a cart with wheels. And they wheel the TV in next to the dinner table. The family gets all excited, brother uh, Dwayne. Uh, they can watch TV and eat at the same time. But I need you to see something. I need you to understand this small action, this simple practice will cause families all over the world to lose their center. The meaning of the table becomes lost. But can we begin anew? Can we bring the dinner table family prayer, family conversations? Can we bring family dinners back? The true meaning of communion, sharing and loving. Webster defines communion as a group of people sharing a profession, intimacy, closeness, harmony, unity, a oneness. Yes, all of the things that are now missing from the table. Again, once they get a certain age, Sister Terry, we let them decide when they want to eat and what they want to eat. I, 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 come on, y'all. Y'all might as well, amen. I, I know y'all, we got these new houses in here, new families. Mama fixed dinner. And if you didn't eat, when everybody sat down to eat, you didn't eat. And you didn't, if you didn't like what she cooked, Uh, come on, y'all, y'all, y'all might as well be honest with me. I, I know y'all, y'all new mamas. You know, I got I got a new mom in my house. You know, little jock say, I don't want that. I'm 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 gonna fix a hot dog. You want a hot dog? Again, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. That, 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 that's that's roast, there's fried chicken. No, I want a hot dog. Now that I says I want to cook a hot dog. Again, we what what have we done? We take our plate, mm, go up the stairs, eat. No, y'all, y'all, we ain't got no stairs in my house. We, we take our plate. We walk over and sit on the floor in front of the TV. Amen, somebody. Our kids fix them something besides what we have cooked. and They take it and go back to their room. We've lost the importance of the table. It's all the things that are now missing from the table. But today we'll see that it truly, everything, love, everything, worship, everything, a sense of respect, everything, my commitment, everything, my, 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 my salvation, everything begins at the table to begin anew. Let's go back, if you would, to the question we asked. What memories does coming to the communion table bring? Now, remember your family table, if you would. Are you able to see what's missing at your table, at your house? What has taken the place of coming together as one? What have you allowed to creep in? What has stolen our hearts, our oneness, our relationship with one another, as well as our relationship with our God? Paul starts by saying, they gathered not for better, 
but for worse. Paul starts this message by saying they gathered not for better, but for worse. First Corinthians 11 chapter verse 17. He then says, when you come together, verse 18, that, that, that word together, together. When the last time you sat down and had a meal with your family together, no phones, no TV. You see, that's why I, I, I like Brother Nate, the old houses. So Terry, the old house, they had a dining room. There was no tea and, 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 and us as houses. The dining room was a separate room. And back in the old days, we didn't have one TV anyhow. So, so you didn't even have to worry about the TV being anywhere near the dining room. Dining room is for dining. Job. You know, we got we got I know some folks who who don't even have tables in their house no more. They just eat wherever they gonna eat. I ain't talking about nobody. I, 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 somebody said I ain't gonna never invite him to my house no more. He ain't got no dining room. We, we, we just eat. What we gonna eat? We got them little tables that you what do you call it? Tray table. Yeah, you know. Sit in the recliner with your big 32 ounce drink stuck in your chair, red back. I ain't talking about you, Anthony. We just, <laughs> you know, God, you know, back in the day, we had the dining room where the table was always set. China on the table. And, and we used to just peep in them as kids. Oh. One day, one day I'm gonna get old enough to go in there. You know, there was two rooms you never went in. You never went in the living room. You know, y'all, 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 you know, like my mother-in-law's birthday was this past week. She would have been 102. Vernell to the day she died, Jock, had that plastic. <laughs> when you sit down <laughs> you buy new furniture and the first thing you do is go get some plastic and put on your furniture and put it in the living room and your kids used to go by and, don't you touch that couch I'm just looking but again look at look at how Paul says that, that, that we used to gather together for better, but now we gather together for the worse. When you come together. Yes, it's almost like he's asking, what has happened to the Pentecostal spirit when the church was with one accord? When they had all things in common, Acts, the second chapter, verse one. And then when you look at verse 41 of that chapter, it says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and the breaking of bread and in prayers together. What happened to together? When we as family sat around the dinner table as one. What happened when we came to the church to worship and serve the Lord as one? What happened to us living uh, the, uh, the doctrine that we have been taught all of our lives with one personal agenda, uh, with no personal agenda, but the agenda of being about kingdom building? When there's no clicks in the church, no big eyes and little U's, how did we mess this thing How was it that we allowed self and selfish desires to creep in? Solomon said a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest and poverty will come upon us like robbers and won't like armed men. Proverbs 6. When the church becomes comfortable. Listen now, I said when the church becomes comfortable, when we no longer press towards the higher mark, Philippians 3, 13 and 14, the church at Corinth was first praised by Paul. Listen now, 
for their steadfastness. First Corinthians three, first Corinthians one, three and five. But now Paul is saying, I pray you not. You've become lukewarm. Your testimony is no longer the same as first Corinthians one and six, where Paul says, even as the testimony at Christ was confirmed in you. Then he says in verse seven, he says, so that ye come behind and no gifts. In other words, they were a church that was powerful in the gifts of God. And in their works, their works were unmatched by anybody. Their worship and service was spirit led. But then the worship became old and stale. Old habits started to come back. The Lord's Supper became just a part of the Passover feast, a tradition. Things became common and communion. The Lord's Supper, the coming together, the Holy Communion spirit was totally lost. Yes, together. Whatever happened to being together. Think about how your family dynamics might change if you just started having dinner every now and then together. I'm um, let you in on a secret. I don't care where your kids is and how far away they move. Make it a point of saying on this day, we having dinner together. I ain't saying I'm perfect, Sister Terry, but there's a rule in my house. First Sunday, I expect y'all to come to my house, have dinner. I, I expect to be able to look in your face and see you, ask you how things are going. I, I, I want to touch you. I want to see you. I, I, I know that come April, fourth Sunday in April, Peggy, I know I'm eating it. Fourth Sunday in April. Every year, I know I'm putting my feet up under Sarah's face, and I'm eating at Sarah's house. I don't care how many folks in the house. I ain't eating in the living room. I ain't eating in the dinner. I'm not eating in front of the TV. I'm sitting with my feet up under the table at Sarah Jane's house. I want to look at. No, she ain't going to be eating. She sit over there on her little chair. I bought her behind the bar in the kitchen. But I can see, I, I, I want the family to come again. What has happened to together? Happened to together. We wonder why when we get old, our, our children act the way they act. Uh, again, I, I, somebody walked in the house yesterday and asked me, must not be nothing on, no sports. Why? Because I'm sitting there, Sister Terry, I, I, while I'm studying, I, I had to sit my stuff down, Peggy, because I had to hear Y'all don't act like my children no more. I had to hear Sidney Portier say, Willie, don't do it, Willie. I had to hear I, uh, uh Anaya says she's never seen it. I had to watch the raisin and the sun because there's something about the family dynamic. When the family starts to break up, it's because we no longer sit at the table together. The church has her problems. Paul said that there's division. In heresy. Why? Because, see, those who can bring most stuff to the table, they eat all their stuff, Peggy. And then there are folks who don't have, so they go home hungry. There are folks like Sister Simmons who brought two bottles of uh, of Jack, and she done drunk all of it, and ain't nobody else get, I mean, ain't nobody else get no Holy Communion. I, 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 that's, I don't know where that slipped out. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Some of y'all coming and getting drunk. You're coming for the wrong reason. Yeah, I know y'all don't watch the movie uh, First Sunday. When, 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 when my man say, can I get a, uh, is this a three cup minimum? Can I get a couple more of them? 
communion. See, that's why we can't have wine, Peggy, because see, some of y'all are swear up and down and lie in the church. I didn't get one. Get in, get in, get in. Again, Sister Terry, the old church, old church, Sister Terry, we not only marched around, but some of the old churches, they would actually fix the communion cups and put them in the that little section on the back of the pew. Y'all didn't even know what that was for. But see, now we can't do that. Some of y'all would be pew hopping. Meet me on row 10, and then you drink up row 10, and you don't move back to row 11. For the preacher can get out good and give the prayer. Some of y'all done got mm, little, what's the new word we use, Anaya? We done got lit. You ain't shouting because the Lord, the Holy Spirit, you shout because you done had a little bit too much. Talk to me, Fred Sanford. Ripple done started rippling. Paul says, but when we come together, when we come together, talking about togetherness, again, whatever happened to just being together, coming together to worship, coming together to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, coming together to give God thanks, coming together for the same purpose to complete his vision, to serve this present age, the hymn writer says, my calling to fulfill. Whatever happened to be able to just come and commune, not because it's custom tradition, but coming because of what God has done. Hallelujah. First point again is together. The second point as we hurry is just plain and simple, the table. But when we lose sight, of the table. Listen to me. We end up losing sight of Jesus. The table, Paul said they came, but for the wrong reason. Jesus said, do this, but do it for the right reason. The reason, don't begin anew because it's the new thing. Don't begin anew because it's the new church theme because it sounds fresh and new, but build on what is true and needed. Build on what has brought us some 32 years. Build on that which our hope is based upon. Paul reminds them by saying, for I have received from the Lord what I also deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, Yes, when we lose sight of the table, we lose sight of Jesus. When we take away the true meaning and purpose of the table, we lose sight of Christ. When we lose sight of the table, we lose sight of oneness and brotherly love. I said, when we lose sight of the table, you lose sight of all that God has done for us. Yes, when you lose sight of the table, you're just plain old simple loss. Paul said, I praise you not. Verse 22, and then he reminds them in verse 23, I have received and now I give it to you that when you come to the table. Yeah, I wish I had Sarah here this morning with me. Mama would make sure that we washed our dirty hands before we sat at the table that we didn't come just any kind of way to the table, that we gave thanks to God for what we were about to receive. Yeah, I'm talking about the table, all things that we have lost. Yeah, as we stand before the table this morning. Yeah, when we come together, therefore, into one place. This is not to eat the Lord's Supper this morning. Verse 20, notice when, when you come together in oneness, when your heart and mind is made right, when your soul is at one accord, when the spirit of the Lord, uh, uh, when you're prepared for true and honest worship, when your hands 
and your hearts are clean. Come uh, to the table. Paul writes not to eat the Lord's Supper, not to eat a meal, not out of tradition, a church's custom. Because it's expected of me. No, these are not the real reasons to come uh, to come to the table. It's not a supper, but it has a special significance and meaning. Listen to Jesus as he says, do this, not eat the meal. No, this ain't a happy meal. Not a ritual, but sit. I said, sit at the table. Allow the spirit to pour out over you. Feel the love of our father. Take my body, which is broken for you. Sacrificed for my church. For you are now a part of my body. Take my blood and drink of it uh, allow it uh, to flow over you uh, to wash you uh, wash your hearts uh, wash your souls uh, white as snow uh, yes drink uh, for it is uh, being shed uh, for the remission uh, of all sins uh, and as long uh, as you do this um, as long uh, as you come uh, in this manner, uh, as long uh, as you come worthy, uh, as long uh, as you uh, do this uh, in remembrance uh, of my sacrifice, uh, one day, uh, I said one day, uh, one day uh, we'll do it anew. Uh, yes, we'll do it uh, anew uh, in my father's house uh, for I'm coming back uh, for my church. Uh, I'm coming back. Uh, for the believers, uh, I'm coming back. Uh, for the blood washed, uh, the holy redeemed, uh, those uh, that have been made righteous. Uh, I'm coming back uh, for those uh, that show up at the table. Uh, welcome guests uh, of the Father. Uh, I'm glad. Uh, I said I'm glad uh, that the God I serve, uh, His Son. Uh, he gave his son, uh, and it was Jesus uh, that gave his life. Uh, he died. Uh, I said he died. Uh, out on Calvary, uh, shed his blood uh, that we might be redeemed. Uh, died. Uh, I said he died. Uh, gave his hands uh, to the nail, uh, his feet uh, to the spike, uh, his head uh, to the crown of thorns, uh, his side uh, to the sword, uh, his back uh, to the cross. Uh, he died. I said he died, uh, laid his head uh, in the locks of his shoulder, uh, buried uh, in a borrowed tomb. Uh, but early, good God Almighty, early Sunday morning, uh, he got up with all power in his hand. And it's the same Jesus. It's the same Jesus that told them that we're going to do this thing, this communion. It's coming together in my father's house, but we're going to do it new. In other words, we're going to do it when all God's children are sitting at the table. And I don't know about you today, but I'm so glad that they can't pass the tray until I get there. They can't break the bread. Peggy, until I, till I get there. Ah, they, they, they can get their seats all they want to. Let y'all in on a secret. I don't know how it works at your house, but Peggy, at my house, I got a seat. Every time the house is full, put the extra leaf in the table. Y'all know how we work it in black houses. Pull up the extra chair. You know, the table don't come, Peggy, but with some six, some eight chairs. So you pull up the extra chairs. Mama asked me the same question every time everybody gathers at my house to eat. You're not going to get up and get a plate? I said, Mama, my joy is watching everybody else get served first. 
I ain't worried about eating because even if all the food gone, Peggy, there's some stuff in that white thing in the fr in, in the garage. Hey, y'all, y'all don't get that one. Y'all don't get that one. I ain't worried about eating, and I ain't worried, Peggy. I ain't worried about no seat. Cause when I walk in the dining room again, when we come together, we don't. We no, no, no. We gonna go in the dining room. Ain't no TV. Ain't no cell phones. Going in the dining room. And when I go in there, Peggy, I see how everybody done got their seats. I see that little short man from Mississippi sitting down there at the, the end of the table. See my mama sitting next to him. I, I see Candace and her crew over here, Anthony and his crew over here. I, I see Georgia and Naya sitting opposite sides. I, I see Alex sitting on this side. I see Stephanie walking around. I see everybody sitting in their place. But there's a chair, Sister Terry, at the head of the table that nobody has sat in. I wish I had some prayer for. So I'm glad today. That no matter how long it takes, baby, that when I get there, I don't need to look for no name tag. I, I, my seat is already there. When you come to commune today, when you commune today, don't do it out of tradition. Don't do it because it's a ritual. Don't do it because... Uh, uh, somebody might be watching me, and if I don't take it, they're going to wonder what I done did. You know, for, for almost 30 years of pastoring, uh, it still bothers me, Sister Terry, that I see folks who get up and leave before we pass out the communion because, you know, they they, they, they hear that verse where it says, if you come unworthy, you you you, you eat and drink damnation. Some folks are sick. Then Paul says some folks are asleep. You know, we, we we smart enough, Dwayne, to at least know what that means in the Bible. You know, it don't mean they're taking a nap. No, they they, they, they taking, uh, let me let me not be pastor. Let me not be politically correct. They taking a dirt nap. Dim, oh, dim. Okay. Well, let me act like I went to Bethune Cook for a minute. Dim, dim, dim dead. Them dead. You know, if I went to Florida State, Peg, I said like this, they done croaked. Cause they ain't got no sense of in Tallahassee. <laughs> Them heels make you lose your mind. But if I went to Tennessee State, I would say they're deceased. <laughs> if I went to Fisk, I would say they're no longer with us. <laughs> Went to you in if I go to Miami, I'll be saying, you know, they 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 187. <laughs> that in Miami? Oh, Miami, you know, they they you never know what they're gonna say in Miami. But I never understood why they would get up and leave. When the same scripture tells us if we would just check ourselves. I serve a God that no matter how messy I am. You know, I know y'all that never have this in y'all house, but when we used to come to the table as little kids, mama used to do the, the check pick. You know, because people like, you know, I got a sister, Sister Terry, that, you know, go to the bathroom and they turn the water on, shh, shh, come back out. <laughs> I ain't talking about nobody. I'm just saying, my mama did a check. Let, let me see if your hands hands wet <laughs> then i had some sisters that got smart enough to at least you're gonna turn the water on and go come back out you know yeah i, I washed them <laughs> i said sister i ain't got i ain't, ain't got no brother it's just, it's just me peggy because i wanted to eat and i want to make sure i got first choice let them have to go back to the bathroom two or three times and wash their hands. No, I'm washing mine good the first time. So, Mama, let me. There's some thighs in that that that, that bowl of chicken. I got to get them first. All God is saying, as we come to the table today, that if there's anything in your life, in your heart, that should not be, God gives us a chance to get that fixed. 
And as we prepare to pray, as we prepare to commune, if you know that there's something, if you're watching with us online or here today, if you know there's something that you need to get right, there's a blessing at the table. The sad thing is there's a curse at the table also, but it's how you come to the to the table. You can come to the table dirty and have to come at the end and get a chicken butt and a back and a chicken neck. Talk to me, Fred Sanford. Or you can come with clean hearts, or clean hands and get you some thighs and legs. Amen, somebody. I wish I had some of y'all. You know, Peggy, Peggy talk about all the time the preacher coming to their house and eating on Sunday and, and all that was left after the preacher done ate, ate the dinner. And he he leave them the backs, the necks. Real black house. We cook the chicken butt too. Y'all 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 can act sedity y'all want to. When you when you, when you, when you're hungry, you eat what you can. A neck bone got meat on it if you try to find it. I, I wish I had some. Y'all rich folks in here. Y'all know, you know, filet mignon people y'all want to. No, nah, you know, chicken foot got some gristle. Act, act, accident you want to. Pig feet got meat. You just got to know how to find, Peggy, find it. Amen, somebody. And all God is saying that if you will come to me. Come to me with an open heart. And the great thing about God is, Peggy, even if you know that you're dirty and it's, you, you feel in your heart that there's no way God can get me clean in just this two or three minute prayer, I'm going to let you in on something else, how good God is. God does not for breathe. You lost me, Pastor. For breeze, you just spray it and it, 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 it say eliminates the odor. No, the odor is still there. You just smelling for breeze. But the good thing about the God I serve, Sister Terry, is that his son Jesus takes his blood, covers all my dirt. And when God the Father looks at me to see if I'm worthy to come to the table, all he sees is the covering of the blood. Oh, I still got some mess that me and the Holy Spirit is working on. But right now, all God sees is the blood. Father God, we come to this time, Lord, first of all, just to say thank you. We thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to be able to come to the table. And Lord God, no matter what condition we come, even if we come as bad children before a good father, that our brother Jesus has shed his blood that we might be covered. I thank you, Lord God, for not looking under the cover. I thank you, Lord God, for not looking under my bed. I thank you, Lord God, for not searching for my dirt. But I thank you for giving me your son who has covered me. I thank you for allowing me to come worthy of the table. Lord God, whatever it is in my life, whatever I've done, thought of, whatever I didn't do, I ask you if you can't remove it right now, just cover me. Cover me, Lord Jesus, that I might be worthy of your blessings. Take this juice, Lord God, and give it a, a, a spiritual significance. Take this bread and allow it to be that which was broken for me. Lord God, more than anything, allow me to be a partaker of the promise that one day we're going to do this thing new and do it in your father's house. Lord God, I thank you. In your blessed son, Jesus name, I pray in the church said, amen. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Well, one day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. And I 
No, it was the blood for me. He's died, but he's coming again. I said he died, but he's coming again. I said he died, but he's coming again for me. He well, one day Jesus died upon the cross, and I know it was the blood for me. The Bible says that that night in which Jesus was betrayed, the night in which Judas left right after the Passover supper, Jesus ordained his own supper. He took the bread and after he had blessed it, said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat you all of it. In a likewise manner, he took the cup and after he had supped, blessed it and supped, he said, this is my blood, which is shed for the remission of all sin. Take and drink you all of it. He said, I'm not drinking anymore the fruit of the vine until I drink it new in my father's house. And they sung a hymn. And they marched out to the Mount of Olives. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my sorrow die? Would he devote that sacred head for such? Oh, as I, oh, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away, rolled away, it was there. 